Hello everyone, I'm Bob Padula, Weather Wool Advisor, and today I'd like to talk a little bit about fiber diameter and the genetics behind it and how fiber diameter influences the softness and the feel of our fabric and the weight of the fabric. In the sheep, while it's growing on its body, um, prior to it actually being born, about 60 days into its development, there is a central lateral or central primary follicle that's formed in the skin of the animal. It's the main big follicle, and then from days 75 to 90, two more holes in the skin, let's, let's think of them as, forming a trio group of primary follicles are formed in the skin of the animal. Those are always arranged in groups of threes and uh, in this trio group, and they are larger and bigger in diameter and subsequently, the fibers growing out of those holes in the skin or those follicles are going to be bigger. Then from about day 90 on up until about two months of age on the animal, then we have what is called the secondary follicle fibers that are, are follicles that grow the fibers. They are more numerous and arranged on all kinds of different sizes and they're different sizes on the animal all around in the skin. And then we've got other ones as they're formed later on in life, intermixed in all over into that animal in its skin. Think of it as the hole in the skin that grows the fiber. So you always are going to have the trio group, the first three. Genetics determines if how many of the secondaries you're going to have. In merino type sheep, you're going to have a secondary to primary ratio of about 20 secondaries per primary. Whereas in the meat type breeds of sheep, you have five secondaries per primary. So if we've got a trio group of three, and we've got 20 secondaries, you've got three times 20 plus the original three. So you've got 63 holes in the skin that grow the fibers on the merino type sheep. Whereas on the meat type breeds of sheep, you've got the three primary follicles and maybe five secondaries. So now all of a sudden you've got 15 plus the three, you've got 18. We all know that nutrients and nutrition drive the system for wool. And if we think of it as a pizza, if we're trying to feed 63 people off of the pizza, we're not gonna have that many, everybody's gonna get a little tiny little bit. If you've got 18 people eating off that same size pizza, they're gonna eat a lot more of the pizza, they're gonna be able to grow a lot more and get a lot more full and the nutrition's there. Therefore, when we think of it, the finer wool sheep have more holes in the skin, follicles, that take and manufacture the wool fiber. And so that's why some of the coarser wool sheep, you know, have, they, they, you can't make fine wool out of them. They just don't have the, the capacity to do that. They don't have, they've got too few of follicles and the nutrition flowing to the skin of the animal is going to grow coarser fibers. Now, the next thing we want to look at is that fiber growing out of those holes, you're going to have a central primary and then the two laterals. They're bigger holes, they're going to produce bigger fibers. The secondaries are smaller. And so when we start looking at what is the proportion, you're going to have all of those in that one little area of that skin of that animal. So you're going to have inherent variability. You're going to have more variability in the coarser ones because you, you can have you've got three and then 15, you know, on there 18 fibers there that are gonna be bigger and coarser. Um, and then whereas the, the big primary follicle on the merino type, well, there's only three of them. And then you've got 20 others. So they're gonna have that smaller diameter. They're gonna shrink that diameter down uh, from an average from a statistical standpoint. And there's more of them, they're more consistent. The other thing is that wool does not grow um, consistently on the animal, it's based upon what its uh, feed value is and what it's feeling like, and it's continually growing. And so it's never the same diameter, even along the individual fiber. When nutrition is good and feed is good, it's going to be bigger in diameter. When feed is constricted, it's going to narrow down and it's gonna be smaller in diameter. And so we've got this diameter change along an individual fiber. And as we're looking at on a fiber, it can be good feed, poor feed, good feed again, 
it's probably going to be its weakest point at its narrowest. Now, what we do, it, for the people who grow wool for weather wool, we time our shearing to make sure that the biggest nutritional draw on the sheep is going to be lactation. Late gestation and lactation is going to be the biggest thing. We time our shearing so that way those critical points happen on the ends of the fiber, not in the middle. And so if we had it this way, it would be in the middle. We shear before lambing, then lambing and lactation, the sheep has that rest period, and then all of a sudden it tapers back on down. And so we're growing wool that is shaped like this for weather wool, not like this, where they shear halfway, you know, the other times of the year in the middle after lambing. So we don't do it that way for weather wool. All of the weather wool uh, growers are shearing pre-lambing or if they do shear post-lambing, it's right after lambing so that the fiber diameter is at its narrowest on the edges. Um, and it's not just like that. Fiber diameter changes all the time on the animal. It can get like this, it can be all mixed up. And so you have to have an average on it because you know, when we think about ourselves, when we don't feel good, we're not feeling, it's hot, it's humid, and we don't want to eat, well, that's going to impact what our cells are doing in our body. And that's going to be impacting what's going on inside the sheep and growing the wool. Um, we won't even be able to tell what's happening today on that sheep for probably three weeks to four weeks because it's got to grow out of the bottom of the follicle to the skin, and then we have to go through and get it far enough up there so when we cut it off, we can actually see what it is. Uh, research work that they do for nutrition programs in wool, they'll take and put a band at one level, then they'll feed for a month, and then they'll cut it off and they'll be able to cut at that band, that dye that, so that way they can say, this is when the nutrition thing started, this is the impact that it was for the last four weeks. Um, and if somebody says, well, we can tell these things by looking at it, uh, they're, it this fiber grows at a different rate than this one and they're growing right next to each other. This one's gonna be longer. It's all mixed together. There's a little bit of, uh, it, it's not as straightforward as one, measuring one fiber and looking at it uh, when, when we look at it. We're getting an average and making a blend. Now when we start looking at what are we looking for fiber diameters, we're measuring these in microns. And a micron is a millionth of a meter. Um, a standard sheet of paper, is about 100 microns thick. That means you could put five 20 micron fibers next to each other on the edge of a sheet of paper, or four 25 micron, or three 33 and a third micron on the edge of a sheet of, a, of, of a paper. Your human eye can't see that differences. Uh, but for illustrative purposes, this straw here is four millimeters. This straw is five millimeters. This straw here is going to be six millimeters. These would be equivalent to 20 micron, 25 micron, and 30 micron. And so you can see the differences in diameter if you look at them. And you can slide one inside the other. So they are a little bit thicker and a little bit thinner that they can slide in, in, in between each other there. Why is this important? Well, when you're going to make a fabric or make some yarn, you have to have about 40 fibers touching each other to give that yarn strength to go through the processing system. Because remember, it's going to be like this and this all over mixed all together. You need about 40 of them in contact with each other. This is what 40 20 micron fibers look like in a cross-sectional area. This is 25 micron. You can see the difference between how big those are. Now, you, you can make, and you could take and make a thicker yarn with finer wool. You just have to have more fibers. But if we want to make the yarn this thick to make that way fabric, okay, now we've got it. Now we count up. Oh, we've only got 20 of them. We, we don't have enough fibers touching each other. That yarn's not going to be strong enough. The difference with weather wool is we use finer wool to go through and to make heavier weight yarns. 
that gives it the added value that it's got extra strength, it's got more fibers touching each other, and it's going to be a stronger fabric and perform better out in the field. All right, Bob. Thank you. Does that work? Is that what you yeah. wanted? Yeah. This is filmed here at PM Ranch in Montevideo, Minnesota, July 16, 2022. Bob has been with Weatherwool since the very beginning, and I think there probably would be no Weatherwool if someone hadn't eventually pointed me to Bob after about 200 phone calls. Thanks, Bob. Thank you, Ralph.